a very good morning to everyone. We, the team of Petroleum Engineers Association, is delighted to organize workshop 1.0, get ready to fly with us, session five on the theme, drilling optimization in oil and gas industry. We are very pleased to introduce Dr. Parimal Arjun Patil, sir, who will be our speaker for today's session. Dr. Parimal Arjun Patil, sir, is a drilling expert, well engineering at Petronas, experience drilling engineer with demonstrated history of working in the oil field service and energy industry, skilled in modeling, analytical studies, root causes analysis, well planning, and drilling engineering. A strong engineering professional with a PhD focus in really string dynamics from Technical University of Coastal, Germany. We will also be posting the video on our YouTube channel so that you can access it anytime. And also we are going YouTube live too. Now I would like Dr. Parimal Patil sir to start the session by sharing their knowledge on drilling optimization in oil and gas industry. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope you hear my voice clearly as well as uh, see the screen. Yes, sir. All right, thank you so much. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, here today and uh, discuss uh, drilling optimization while um, drilling oil and gas wells, uh, not only to oil and gas, but can you know can be applicable for geothermal salt drilling and so on. So um, today's presentation is uh, basically, um, I've, I've compiled this pack uh, considering the young professionals. Um, those who want to learn more about uh, drilling engineering, drilling optimizations, but that does not mean that uh, you know the experienced ones um, cannot listen to this. It just uh, uh, maybe basics um, for them. All right, uh, this is the uh, agenda for today. I will start with the well construction uh, process, uh, the uh, you know the challenges uh, involved by drilling a well. Uh, quickly touch the system optimization approach. So when it comes to drilling engineering, um, what are the um, points you have to remember? Uh, then I will quickly show the drilling system, the mechanics behind it, you know. Um, and then uh, I have to consider, uh, I have uh, taken drilling dynamics as one of the uh, topic, you know, to optimize, to look at the optimization uh, point of view. And uh, before ending my presentation, I will quickly touch the process, the methodology for optimization, you know, for drilling optimization. And then we'll recap. So key points to take away at the end of the presentation. Um, you should be able to, you know, define what the drilling optimization is and its purpose. You should be able to explain that. Um, since I'm going to explain more about the drilling vibrations and its role, you should be able to, you know, understand what drilling vibrations uh, are. And then uh, when we talk about improving drilling efficiencies, it's uh, it's very important to understand the modes of vibrations uh, and the risk involved while drilling a well. Uh, a couple of points. Uh, you need to think uh, holistically if you want to improve the drilling efficiency and uh, what are the decisions uh, you'll be taking um, that should generate value with some, you know, just viable solutions. Coming to the uh, valuable construction process, basically, you know, if, if you want to reach to the hydrocarbons uh, resources or, you know, geothermal resources down there, which are buried underground, you need to drill, you need to make a pathway, you need to drill a hole in it. And uh, for that, you need a rig which is uh, capable of uh, handling the pressures and loads uh, in order to reach uh, up to that depth. A um, couple of points to highlight here. Um, it's not an easy process. Millions of wells uh, have been drilled so far since we started uh, drilling um, in, I think, 1800 or so. And um, you have for drilling, it's, uh, you know, you have to drill through uh, different zones, different formations, and which are not stable. Some of them got challenges while drilling. So you need to, you need to learn those, uh, you know, obstacles, uh, you know, to better handle them. And I have highlighted a few of them. For example, the main um, objective is to drill a well, which is stable enough, right? And the quality well bore is one of the objectives. The, uh, the other one could be, you know, drilling faster to, you know, op to optimize the cost. Basically, if you uh, drill longer, if you spend more time, definitely your 
um, your processes are not uh, optimized. You will spend more time, you spend more cost. At the same time, uh, the downhole equipment reliability is important. For example, you know, drilling a well, you need to uh, drill with different sections. And as you go uh, lower in the smaller sections, the reliability of the downhole tool, uh, tools is um, a major challenge. And then, you know, the increasing temperature down there, you have to, you have to be, uh, keep that in mind as well. So looking at, the, looking at the pie chart here, what you see is drilling actually takes more than 50% of the well cost. So let me just start a pointer here. So this, is, this pie chart shows the, uh, the cost, the drilling cost breakdown. And you can see that in this one, more than 60% is for the drilling and 20 more than 20% is spent for the logging, right? And rest is rig up, rig down and so on. So if you can optimize um, the drilling operations, drilling different sections, completing those sections in an efficient manner, definitely you will save a lot of cost. So how we can reduce the cost is by you know automating the process, for example, pipe handling on the surface, or you know um, you, if you got uh, real time data, then you can you can put some uh, sensors uh, on, on the on the surface on the rig so that you can uh, not manually interfering the uh, parameters, but uh, the robots are doing for you. So minimizing the risk in real time and maximizing the drilling progress. So basically improving the ROP. So once you do that, definitely um, you can you can uh, discover the reservoirs uh, in real time a lot. For example, doing some reservoir navigation jobs. So um, you explore the downhole reservoirs in real time, basically by getting your FE data and navigating through these sections in real time. That means you maximize uh, you know the recoverables from from that well from that zone and definitely you reduce the available construction cost and then you generate more revenue as you explore more uh, reserves down there. So what is, what is drilling engineering? Typically a drilling engineer spends most of his time in uh, you know, getting the offset data, it's analysis, uh, identifying the challenges, hazards in offset wells, and then um, you know, a drilling engineer definitely uh, come up with the plan of uh, optimized Casing setting depths uh, based on the pore pressure, fracture pressure data. Then for those uh, sections, as you see in the, uh, in the schematic here, different sections are involved uh, in drilling well. So different strings, BHAs needs to be designed and um, understanding the hydraulics uh, and the target drive for those uh, strings. It's also one of the important um, aspects of drilling engineering. Uh, drill bit selection is also important in terms of, you know, if you want to improve uh, the performance or let's say rate of penetration, that's uh, accountable. Uh, so it cannot be ignored. And um, processes, for example, vibration monitoring in real time, acting uh, on what you get, what you see in real time, that's also another aspect. So basically performance-based learning. It's uh, actually from well to well. So, Whatever the uh, the learnings you take from one well needs to be improved and applied to the next well. That's the other aspect of uh, drilling engineers. So when we talk about drilling optimization, what is it actually? As I, as I showed, wellbore construction is not a simple process. There are many uh, elements. Uh, you know, yeah, they work together, and combining all the aspects together is, is a challenge. So if you're looking on the screen, there's mud engineering, drilling engineering, you know, there's bit selection, performance drilling, then hydraulics is also one of the uh, major, uh, you know, um, system which needs to be optimized uh, while, you know, thinking of uh, drilling optimization. Then on the other side is the well, bore, well planning uh, phase. You cannot uh, drill any trajectory. It needs to be optimized in order to have your rock and drag hydraulics uh, you know, uh, optimized. You need to handle, the rig need to handle the, the, the forces, the loads, uh, the pressures. So considering all that, uh, each and every element uh, in drilling engineering needs to be looked at um, and needs to be improved.
Moving on, a quick uh, example. Uh, I want to show you on the right-hand side, you see um, days versus depth chart, which is uh, standard. That's what we talk about uh, when we look at the offset data. So what you see here is this, this example has been taken from one of the uh, case study paper in Iraq uh, drilling campaign. So they started drilling uh, wells. Uh, in this one, the five wells have been shown. And the performance, as you see, the first well, the green line, that was, let's say, maybe the first well in that uh, area. So nothing much was available to uh, you know, analyze and implement. So they learned during this uh, drilling well. So you can spend, a lot of time was spent in this one. And uh, as they went forward, so the drill second, third, fourth well, the, 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 the amount of time they spent on drilling a well was reduced. So the curve was shifting to the left. So which, which shows that they, they, they captured the knowledge uh, throughout the drilling process from well to well, like I mentioned. And whatever the incidents, unplanned event, uh, they try to mitigate in the next well. For example, if you, if you see, so this is the first section. They, they case that section, then drill another section. And so this is the third section. In the third section, you can see a lot of unplanned events probably might have happened, which uh, you, know, you can see some flat times here. So in the fifth well, you see it's a very steep slope. There is only one event which might have happened there. So they learned uh, and they applied their learnings through the process. And that resulted in less time spent um, drilling a well. So this is what uh, we need to uh, think of when you think of uh, drilling optimization. On the left-hand side, what you see is the drilling performance versus uh, number of wells drilled. So the first one correlates to the first well here. So the green line, hard learning process. And as you have to optimize the process, there's a cost saving, as you see here. So as the drilling performance increases, you, have, you, you save a lot of amount, as well as you, know, you can deliver more number of wells for a given period of uh, time. You know? So uh, looking at this, the fifth well was completed in less than 80 days, while the first one took almost 95 days. Right. Moving on, so what is what is the drilling system? So this is a simple schematic of uh, you know what we are talking about. You have a mast with top drive and drill string in a hole, drilling a hole. And I just try to uh, show you know the the parameters used. Basically, you know, drill string is supported by the top drive and the mast here. And the weight on bid, what you see here, that's applied at the bid is basically controlled by the top drive, moving the string up and down. And what you see on this uh, graphics is the, the string is under tension up to the neutral point, which is somewhere in the BHA heavyweights or drill collars, right? And below that neutral point, the string, the BHA is in compression. And the effective weight on bid is, is applied. So typically the drill string is talk about uh, you know can can be up to eight thousand meters long you know depending on the application if it's ERE definitely it's it's, it's a lot longer and the BHA length typically is between fifty to two hundred meters if there is a lot of electronics so for example if the data is required definitely there's uh, the the BHA is long but then um, it it all depends on you know what what what's the objectives. Um, I just try to uh, quickly show you know uh, what happens when you drill a well. You got lateral vibrations, uh, axial vibrations, and torsional vibrations happening down there. They might get um, you know uh, translated up to the surface or may not be. Let's see in detail. You know, so the approach in order to make a hole in the ground, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the earth, you need to you need to provide the drill string or the bit with a power. You need to provide. You need to rotate a bit. You need to uh, have a torque on bit, and you need some hydraulics, you know, to you know uh, remove those cuttings that were generated down hole. So power in, and you can additionally put some uh, extra RPM and torque by having a down hole motor. It generates the extra RPM torque down hole. So that's that's the power in or energy into the system. The result of it is you get rate of penetration. And 
some other uh, you know vibrations is one of the uh, brilliant dysfunction which we don't want actually then you also have drag you also have friction and some transmission losses maybe the efficiency you know this is um, what you get so power in equals power out so what you want is basically lower vibrations and higher rate of penetrations so putting it simply in the equation form and law of conservation of energy tells us that's energy in equals energy out one form is converted to another so whatever power in into the rig should result into destroying rock right as in the um, in the uh, right hand graphics so you don't want to waste your energy uh, put into the system in you know destroying tools because we will see in, uh, going forward you know what vibrations uh, cause to the drill string you don't want to destroy your tools downward but you want to improve your uh, drilling efficiency improve the uh, penetration so i just try to put uh, in, in the small graphics here so what means uh, if you reduce vibrations so if you reduce vibrations definitely the drilling efficiency is improved um I will, I will give you, uh, you know, in drilling mechanics and uh, uh, slides uh, further, uh, what is my drilling efficiency, how we quantify drilling efficiency in terms of, you know, mathematics and how we can realize that. So by improving the drilling efficiency, you improve the rate of penetration and ultimately you minimize, you minimize the cost. That's, that's the whole idea of uh, this approach of drilling optimization. So let's look into the drilling mechanics, what it is. So in order to quantify uh, drilling efficiency, we use the me mechanical specific energy as you know, it's, it's the work done to drill a unit volume of rock. So this, this, this concept was actually taken, into, uh, taken from uh, the mining industry in late uh, 60s. So uh, Tail came up with this equation uh, of MSC, which has got two parts. Right, so weight on bit uh, divided by uh, bit area. That's the axial force, and the the one on the left is the torsional force or torsional energy. So MSE is torsional energy plus uh, the axial energy. And uh, on the on the right hand side, what you see is the efficiency equals the confined compressive strength of the rock divided by the mechanical specific energy. Very simple in terms of defining efficiency. If it's 100%, then the specific energy equals to the rock strength. Very simple. So that's the 100% of efficiency. But reality is something different. Drilling efficiency is never 100%. So we have so many uh, losses um, in energy. So we will see going forward, you know, how we calculate. Um, well, what's the typical drilling efficiency? Just to give you uh, the talk, it can be calculated using uh, this equation here. dB is the, um, the bit diameter and the weight on bit. So basically, if you punch all the um, numbers, if you have, you can calculate the MSE for, um, for, for the uh, given point in time. More about MSE. Um, this, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, concept was applied uh, based on what the mining industry was doing in late 60s. So uh, in oil and gas, after 1995, when Mr. Um, Fisser validated these equations, uh, it came into limelight and people started realizing the benefits of uh, mechanical specific energy. And later in uh, 2005, uh, ExxonMobil came up with this drilling specific energy concept. And uh, after that point in time, uh, industry realized the benefits of uh, understanding or you know, calculating MSE or DSE in real time and uh, maximizing the ROP based on this concept. So what you see here is uh, the plot of drilling specific energy, which is in PSI, uh, versus rate of penetration. And on the left, you see ROP, which is rate of penetration versus weight on bed. So in layman's term, if you increase weight on bed, definitely you will uh, increase ROP, but up to a certain extent. After that, if you increase weight on bed, there is no increase in rate of penetration. So this point is defined as a flounder point or inefficient drilling. So after that, 
uh, whatever the weight on weight increase will not result in uh, in rate of penetration. So basically, you are spending energy for pushing the width, but not resulting in uh, you know progressing the hole. So that's how it's shown in this uh, right hand side chart. Is the on the on the bottom side what you see is the efficient drilling. Basically, the ROP is high, but the drilling specific energy is low. And let's say let's take an example. If you're if if you're drilling a hole, right after after setting a depth, you start your new section. You your bit is new and so on. So as the bit is aggressive, it's new. You will have a higher ROP as you drill along. You know as the section progresses, the bit gets dull or certain things happens. The formation changes. Formation becomes uh, harder and so on. And slowly, um, your drilling specific energy increases, meaning you are into inefficient drilling. I'm not considering the, let's say the bit is still aggressive, but maybe the drilling parameters applied are not correct. The weight on bit applied, the uh, torque on bit is not, uh, you know, um, correct based on this uh, concept of flounder point. So you need to constantly look at the real-time data. You need to cal uh, calculate the drilling specific energy or mechanical specific energy and always stay in this efficient drilling zone. That's that's the idea. So moving on this, uh, I've got an example of uh, MSE log. Now, um, maybe if you haven't uh, seen any log earlier, this is depth, depth, depth based log. As you see depth on the left hand side, the, the first track and the MSE is calculated on the right hand side track. So this is the fifth track. And in between you have um, RPM torque in the second track. So the red line is the torque, the black tick line is the RPM. And you have the um, you know ROP, the gray shaded area is the ROP, weight on bit is the green line, and the hydraulics, the pump pressure and the flow on, on the fourth track. So what you see in this is they have a baseline based on the lithology they are drilling. Right, so this is the let's say if you want to drill 100% uh, efficient, this is the um, energy you have to spend. Now, looking at the looking at the uh, drilling parameters and the MSE, what's happening is the at let's say 1950, the ROP is high. Wow, that's great. This this is what we want, and the drilling efficiency or the mechanical specific energy you you look at is is low. So this is this is efficient drilling. But what happens? The MSC is very high when you compare with the baseline, and the ROP drops. The rest of the parameters are same. So there is no change in torque, RPM. There is no change in weight on weight. So what happened? Maybe there is a change in lithology, right? So for this lithology, the weight on bit is not enough. Or maybe the weight on the is too high. Maybe you're exceeding the flounder point, as we have seen. So uh, in this case, the weight on bit need to be reduced in order to have this mechanical specific. Because in this case, you are spending more energy, way more energy uh, required, you know, for drilling uh, with that ROP. So this is optimizing uh, the surface parameters. Moving on, the second example. What you see here is, again, uh, same log, depth-based log, and uh, they have highlighted here, the, the they set the casing. So this is one section, and after 1900, maybe 20, that's the another section. So as they realized, they, they were spending more energy, but they were not getting the benefit of it. So the ROP was low, as you see, it's uh, ROP starts from zero to 400, so probably this is 100. Uh, Feet an hour. And at the end of the section, as you see here, the MSE drops below while the ROP jumps. So they realized that they were not managing the uh, parameters properly. They might have drilled this section faster than what they did, actually. So in the later section, they try to apply the concept of uh, you know calculating MSE and then staying uh, in the efficient zone. So they did the weight on bit test. As you see here, they increased the weight on bit slowly, the green line, as you can see here, and resulting was the increase in ROP, 
while the MSE was lower. And they did this until the maximum uh, ROP was reached. So this is how they, they try to optimize the parameters in, in, in real time. Moving on, so what are the reasons of efficient, inefficient drilling? As we saw, uh, inadequate drilling parameters is one of the uh, reasons. Then could be, you know, the uh, bit damage. The, the bit is already damaged because you, uh, the bit experienced already lots of uh, shocks and, you know, the, it wasn't anticipated earlier that you will hit the uh, hard formation and so on. So damage bit could uh, reduce uh, the rate of penetration. The other might could be, uh, you know, uh, inefficient uh, weight on bit transfer. So maybe the BHA is hanging somewhere on the ledges. Your stabilizers uh, are hanging on the ledges and the bit is not uh, getting enough weight on bit in order to uh, progress ahead. Or could be drilling vibrations as you're spending uh, less amount of time in destroying, uh, less amount of energy in destroying rock, the more amount of uh, energy is spent into, you know, uh, vibrations or, you know, uh, drilling fluid. Maybe it's not designed uh, properly for, you know, the, the lithology section, what you're drilling. So bit boiling is one of the reason uh, you, uh, the ROP is reduced. And also uh, improper hole cleaning. You need to get uh, the cuttings out of your hole in order to, you know, drill uh, further. If your hole is, uh, you know, it's filled with cuttings, definitely it slows down your performance. And the BHA limits, definitely the BHA needs to handle uh, the loads, the shocks uh, downhole. So you need to design uh, your string as per your need. So drilling dynamics, Let's look at the drilling dynamics, what it is. So there are three modes of vibrations. As you see on the, on the, on the graphics, you have axial vibrations, then you have the lateral vibrations and the torsional vibrations. So these three basic modes of vibrations um, are the cause of dysfunction. And these are resulted due to inefficient or improper uh, understanding of uh, the lithology or drilling and the parameters you're applying. Um, as axial vibrations, it name itself suggests that it's a, it's a bit bounce, right? So uh, you have uh, the axial um, movement of your drill string. Sometimes it happens that uh, the axial movement, you can see it on the surface, uh, typically in shallower sections, bigger size hole sections if you're, if you're drilling. But as you go deeper, then uh, the effect of uh, axial vibrations is, is reduced because uh, of the elastic, elasticity of uh, the drill string. Um, lateral vibrations, uh, there are typically two uh, types of lateral vibrations. One is uh, backward whirl and a forward whirl. We will see uh, um, what, lateral and, uh, what backward and forward whirl is in a minute. And the torsional vibrations. So torsional vibrations is torsional oscillations or stick slip. So, the, basically, uh, the string uh, stops rotating or the bit stops uh, rotating and suddenly spins once the energy is stored in the string. That's the stick slip. One of the recent uh, advances in the, in the drilling dynamics is HFAO. What you see here is high frequency axial oscillations and HFTO. HFTO has been studied, uh, was studied in the past, but not to that extent because uh, the technology, the, the sensors were not available in order to capture the data. So, um, but from past, let's say five or 10 years, uh, industry is looking at this HFTO, high frequency torsional oscillations. And uh, recently this year, um, the SPE paper, one of the SPE paper presented in, um, in March, so by, uh, Sigu, Sigura, he talked about uh, HFAO, high frequency torsional oscillations. So it's very new development advances in uh, drilling dynamics. But since the sensors are capable of uh, measuring uh, this high frequency stuff downhole, uh, it's exploring, uh, we are experiencing new uh, advancement in drilling dynamics. I will, I, will, uh, I will touch uh, high frequency torsional oscillations uh, in, in, in one slide later. Before that, looking at the lateral vibrations. So what are the lateral vibrations? Have a look at this video. So what you see here is this is the, uh, the top drive uh, drilling a big hole section. 
probably uh, look at the drill string size and it's it's vibrating like crazy right this is not uh, normal so commonly referred as bending or whirl as you see as uh, there are a lot of vibrations the string is bending and uh, you can imagine if this phenomenon is happening downhole uh, when you are drilling the the string or the bha is banging on the wellbore wall continuously so the uh, electronics down there needs to sustain these vibrations if not then definitely you need to pull out uh, for for the tools right and this is the uh, one of the main cause of uh, failure of fatigue in the bottom hole assembly right so th there is a limit for electronics as well to sustain the vibrations but these kind of vibrations need to be reduced as soon as you uh, see it on in the in the real world moving on Torsional vibrations, as I may, uh, quickly explain, stick slip is uh, torsional oscillations or stick slip. So torsional oscillation is when the bit doesn't stop. But stick slip is when the bit stops um, in a point of time. So as you see in this graph, the blue line is the surface speed of the top drive. So it's continuous, right? It doesn't start and stop, but it's, it's continuous. But due to the... Um, the elasticity the, uh, or the stiffness of the drill string, what happens is the bit spins as the torsional energy overcomes the friction, right? And once it does, it comes to rest. And as you see this uh, point in time, the bit is resting, but the string is still being uh, rotated or the energy is being still stored in the, in the, in the, in the string by the top drive. And when it's, once it overcomes the friction it slips. So that's how the stick slip is. Commonly observed in uh, aggressive PDC bits. Um, typically in uh, roller cone bits, you will not see uh, stick slip as you know, uh, the, the aggressive nature of the uh, bit is even. Moving on. So as I mentioned, the high frequency torsional oscillations, what it is actually, you know, stick slip is, is, is a low frequency vibration. So less than 0.5 Hertz, as you see here in this uh, chart, the bit slips and then comes to point uh, where it rests. So it stops spinning. So for two seconds, and then as the uh, string is being rotated from top drive, uh, it slips again, right? So the, the frequency is very low, but in high frequency torsional oscillation, as you can see in this example, the frequency is more than 100 hertz. So it can go up to 1000 hertz as well as the downhole data, um, you know, uh, from that we can, we can say easily say that, yeah, there was high frequency torsional oscillation up to 1000 hertz as well. But this is the typical um, frequency for HFTO when you talk about, uh, you know, six and three quarter tools and so on. Details can be, can be uh, read in the SPE paper. So I have, uh, have the source highlighted in all the slides. So moving on, what, what happens uh, if you have vibrations? Can we still drill? So before going further, I want you to see this uh, video. This is a very old video and I think very uh, famous. Uh, one of the bridge in uh, Washington state Tacoma Narrow Bridge was um, was open, I think, in uh, in May 1940, and within five months, the bridge was collapsed because um, the event, the wind was blowing violently with 40 miles an hour, and that frequency of the wind matched with the uh, natural frequency of the bridge, and that resulted in in the collapse of the bridge. So basically, whenever something uh, in resonance happened, definitely uh, it breaks. So similarly, drill string has got its own natural frequency. And while drilling, we want to stay away from this natural frequency of the drill string. And we can vary, uh, we can stay away from this natural frequency by changing uh, the parameters applied while drilling. For example, rate, uh, weight on bit, RPM, and so on. 
So we stay away from this natural frequency. That is one way uh, to have or to improve the reliability of your downhole tools. Moving on, um, how we can say that which zone is uh, safer in terms of when we apply drilling parameters? So this is stability roadmap, very generic. You know, you can you can understand the modes of vibrations using this. So what you see is the um, weight on weight RPM chart. On the left hand side, with the increase in weight on bit and less RPM with uh, less string RPM, what you will observe is a stick slip in a BHA or in a string. So in order to get away from the stick slip, what you need to do is increase RPM. And to that extent that you should not have uh, lateral vibrations, right? So there is so-called stable zone, which is not a stable. I will, I will show you why. But this area is considered as, as, uh, as a stable zone, right? On the, on the right hand side, what you see is the weight on bit uh, against uh, RPM and the acceleration, downhole acceleration data is captured in this, in this plot. So that's, that's the baseline for this stable zone, right? So the axial, ex, uh, tangential accelerations was less than 5G in this one, right? And the another set of data was acquired for tangential acceleration and as you can see, we are still in stable zone, but the tangential accelerations is greater than 15 G, right? So basically the torsional oscillations or high frequency torsional oscillations, which is uh, normally termed as uh, tangential acceleration as well. Uh, so these shocks are experienced by the string. Now uh, you can imagine G is when F1, uh, when you consider this as uh, in, a, in, a, in a car race, you know, Formula One race. So the driver in that race is experiencing, I think, three or four Gs when he hits the pedal, right? So 15 Gs is a, quite a lot. And the BHA needs to sustain in these vibrations. So even if you don't see these vibrations because we don't measure it, or the tool has no capability to measure, but the advances in sensor measurement. Um, with that, we can we can actually capture this data these days, but we had to pay uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, research and development and the cost as well associated with this um, R&D stuff. So, in a sense, we are in a stable zone, but still uh, we have to take care about you know high tangential accelerations. And that's the reason we need to uh, understand what's happening downhole. We don't want to have damaged tools. We don't want to have uh, you know junk lost in hole. We want to come out in one piece as we drill the hole, right? So as you see in the pictures here, this is a junk uh, recovered from uh, the lost BHA. We don't want this to happen, right? Because this incurs additional costs. This is NPT, non-productive time. Uh, you, you say that, okay, we don't uh, lose a string, but as you see here, there's a wheel uh, on, on this side of the pipe. We don't want this because you cannot run these pipes uh, again in the hole, right? Uh, and then the bit. So this is the uh, roller cone bit. This is the extreme case. We don't want to lose cones in, in the hole. That's, that's the reason we want to understand uh, drilling dynamics and how we can improve for better hole quality and steerability. So let's learn on uh, about the uh, drilling parameters. Uh, I have chosen a case study. I got it this uh, from SPE paper uh, from North Sea. Uh, the platform Ula is uh, in the Norwegian North Sea and was uh, it was the first well drilling through this platform. They couldn't finish it. They found that um, you know drilling this inhomogeneous formation. So they were drilling the 12 and quarter section through. Hordaland, which is basically a clay stone and shell with hard stranger of dolomite. So dolomite is hard, right? So if you have these um, uh, layers, the stringers, then definitely uh, it's for the driller, it's hard to manage the drilling parameters. You cannot change uh, on fly the drilling parameters and that results in you know uh, damages to the drill bit, damages to the uh, BHA 
And what they observed in the, in the first well was they required seven BHA runs. They need four bits uh, for drilling 12 and a quarter section. This is the quick uh, overview of uh, what they uh, learned, they documented. So the first well, uh, drilling 12 and a quarter section, they, they ran six PHAs. And the ROP, if you see, was very low. In, in the first run was 40, but in later runs was almost four and five meter an hour. Later on, uh, they, they saw, okay, the, the motor BHA is not a solution for this section. So they went with rotary steerable system with a downhole optimization tool. They wanted to learn more about what's happening down there while drilling. So, and, this, uh, and the result was three BHA runs and the bit was, you know, in, in, the, in the last one, you can see zero, zero. So it's almost green. And the ROP was also better compared to the first one. So this is how you, um, you know, you can improve your drilling efficiency by managing the drilling parameters in real time. Typical uh, rotary steerable BHA, you have a PDC bit and behind the bit, you got the uh, rotary steerable uh, electronics uh, to measure uh, resistivity, gamma, directional tool to take surveys and the drilling optimization tool. So basically drilling optimization tool has got strain gauges to measure bending forces, bending loads, um, bit pounds, torques, as you can see, uh, accelerometers for lateral uh, vibrations and magnetometers for stick slip or downhole RPM. Um, I have taken uh, logs from this paper just to quickly uh, show how the downhole optimization tool could be used in order to mitigate uh, vibrations in real time. So it's the same example as I explained. They were drilling uh, the second uh, section, 12 and quarter section, and then um, a, a typical log. Now this one is the time-based log, as you see time uh, track here. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see the block height in the green, you've got the gamma ray, the blue curve, and the ROP. ROP is from 100 to zero, so the reverse scale. Then you have this uh, axial vibrations. On the uh, right-hand side, you have RPMs. So this is the downhole RPM, right? And this is, this is torque. You have, the blue one is the, uh, Memory, so downhole torque, the S is the surface torque, the same with the weight on bit. The blue one is the downhole weight on bit, and the red one is the surface weight on bit. So you can see there is there is some uh, discrepancy between the surface weight on bit and the downhole weight on bit, but the torque is efficiently transferred, so as there is no difference between the surface torque and the downhole torque, right? So what is happening here is, they are drilling uh, through the, uh, this uh, 12 and a quarter section, and suddenly uh, the tool records backward world. As you see, the uh, the minimum RPM is exceeding, right? So this is this is the indication of backward world. So when backward world happens, you know there's an increase in lateral acceleration. So definitely this needs to be cured because lateral vibrations. You know if you have lateral, we have seen the video just now. If uh, the, the frequency matches with the applied, uh, the frequency of applied parameters, definitely the resonance will occur. We want to stay away from the resonance happening down there. So what they did was they, 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 they picked the string. As you can see, ROP dropped to zero. They picked the string. They restarted the drilling after um, a period of, you know, after some moment, and they were on bottom again. So the backward world was mitigated, as you can see. And uh, again, the ROP was increased as they optimized the parameters right here. The next set of example, you know, after uh, they cured the backward world, they have this uh, stick slip. Same log or similar log, you have um, um, the block height in the green, gamma ray, ROP in red, the, uh, vibra the RPMs. On, on, on this flag, as you see, the min max RPM, the average is the red one, and torque and weight on bit. So what do you see in these cases? The torque transfer is not efficient. The weight on bit is very close to the surface, uh, 
um, but there is some discrepancy. Maybe there's some losses. Yeah, improper. Uh, let's say inefficient rate of the transfer. What they were trying to do is they were trying to improve improve the ROP because the ROP was dropping. So they increased the weight on bid to see the effect if ROP uh, can increase or not. But what they what they saw there was a uh, stick slip, continuous stick slip. As you see, the the, the max uh, RPM was something around 300, and the minimum RPM was zero. So the bid was actually stopping. Um, and this is the typical stick slip uh, log you see here. So what they did, they reduced the weight on bid at this moment in time. So they 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 dropped the surface weight on bid, and as you can see, since they picked the string, the downhold weight on bid was also reduced, and the stick slip was mitigated. So maybe the, the formation was tough to drill, and there is no way to you know increase the uh, ROP. So better manage the drilling dynamics downhold there. This is uh, the continuous uh, of, of uh, the previous log. After they mitigated stick slip, uh, they saw an event where there was a backward whirl. So as they were increasing weight on bit, they saw this backward whirl or lateral vibrations. So immediately, as soon as they saw this uh, backward whirl, they reduced the surface weight on bit, and it was mitigated. So you have to continuously monitor the parameters you are applying and the downhole dynamics in order to you know, um, increase the uh, reliability of downhole tools or BHA. So what are the lessons learned? You have to actively manage the parameters. And uh, if the lithology is known, then it's, it's much better in order to plan ahead. But if it's not, then you have to rely on real-time data in order to uh, you know, proactively or uh, actively look at the drilling parameters and change the, the parameters as required. Then several events, lateral vibrations were cured uh, by simply stopping, picking up off bottom, and then restarting the drilling. Other lessons learned could be, you know, you can improve your ECD by, uh, you know, better managing your drilling fluids property. So that way you can better clean your hole and also increase the uh, ROP. As I already mentioned, if you move away from uh, drilling dynamics, definitely the reliability of uh, downhole tools, BHA, and the integrity of the BHA or its health is, is improved. So quickly, I want to touch with uh, the, the process, what drilling optimization is. What is drilling optimization? Basically, it's uh, identifying the issues uh, from the offset wells, determining the course of action, uh, as you see here. So offset day, and so based on the post uh, analysis, if you have, you look into the issues, what happened or what challenges uh, you had earlier in the past wells. So you identify, you document those uh, issues, those challenges, and then you propose a, a solution in order to have, you know, um, less challenges or in order to mitigate the risk associated with those uh, sections of BHAs. And you try to improve, uh, improve the processes as you go along from well to well. And those uh, improved processes are captured and the feedback loop is, uh, you know, is, is complete. It's a cont continuous knowledge management process. It's said by John Rhodes, then uh, BDM with Baker Hughes, we cannot improve efficiency or reduce NPT and improve risk management in isolation. So you don't have to look, uh, or you cannot just look to one set of parameters or one uh, parameter, but you have to look holistically, right? So it's not just, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a process. So you have to look into different aspects. You have to look into, um, drill string, you have to look into, you know, casing uh, program, you have to look into drilling fluids, and, you know, you have to look into the uh, rig efficiency, the experience crew has got, and that results into drilling optimization. So, um, how can you do that? So, after uh, offset well analysis starts with uh, collecting, you know, the information about the wells, uh, your drill, the geology, the formation, poor pressure, fracture pressure gradients uh, in, in those formations. Then um, set of data required or reports is the daily drilling reports, the BHA performance reports, how good was the BHA uh, in the past wells. Uh, bit 
uh, attached to those bits, uh, the BHAs, was that good enough? Do we need some improvement or some other technology needs to be applied? So bit record is important from that uh, point of uh, view. Uh, photos, bit photos tells you a lot. You know, the bit dull, when you do dull grading, it tells you a lot what kind of, uh, you know, issues you had, what kind of challenges, whether it was, you know, what kind of vibrations you had down there can tell you from the photos. So bit balance, bit stability report, um, you know, to choose, a, you know, a bit suitable for the BHA and the formation needs to be uh, looked at. Then open hole logs, uh, you can refer to, you know, caliper log, how good uh, the quality of uh, well bore you drilled was. And then uh, look into the drilling parameters, uh, you know, depth base, time base, as we saw a few examples in the, in the presentation. And then uh, the mud log is also useful to understand, you know, what kind of formations uh, you drill through uh, the PHA. And then it's easier to plan, um, you know, considering the same lithology uh, you can design your mud program. Maybe you know the well uh, wasn't stable enough, so you can you can improve your mud quality in order to have a better hole cleaning, and so on. Right. So these are just uh, a set of uh, data required to start the process, the drilling optimization process. But not uh, limited to that kind of that data set. Yeah, you can explore all uh, sorts of data you can uh, you know get through. So, um, as I said, holistic approach uh, is what is required in order to, you know, uh, to determine uh, the action points. So you need to you need to identify the inefficiencies, and in order to improve those uh, inefficiencies, you need to proactively look into you know the whole process of uh, well bore construction. As I said, you know you need to look into the uh, experiences uh, available on the rig the rig hands and the best practices what uh, are available in the, in the market. For example, maybe the, uh, you, you, can, you can clearly see uh, between the two shifts um, on, on the rig, uh, there is a difference in, uh, you know, in, in the performance. So definitely there, there, there is something with the experience um, in, in, that, uh, in that batch. So one, one, one batch or one shift gives you uh, good performance, good ROP. The other shift is, uh, you know, low ROP. Maybe they are, uh, you know, having good practices. Maybe they're not following the best connection practices. So you need to look into those uh, uh, practices as well. And based on the identified challenges, you need to set performance. You need to set KPIs and achieve those KPIs. So capturing lessons and the process improvement, as I said, it's not a single parameter uh, stuff. You have to look holistically. For example, improving the drilling efficiency, you need to see, uh, you need to choose the right bit in, in, in the BHA to have a better steerability, right? As, as, as this schematic shows. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, you know, uh, inter, interplay. So you, you cannot just uh, rely on one set of parameters. You need to look at uh, from holistic point of view, and we, we can definitely reduce some operational risk by, you know, applying some best practices and definitely improving uh, the drilling performance and the cost. A simple schematic, I try to put, um, you know, all together what I have explained so far. Uh, if you want to go through, I can quickly go through this. So on, 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 on what you see on the chart is, you know, it's different charts with drilling efficiency, time, and rock hardness. So as you, as you mitigate the vibrations, the efficiency is improved. Efficiency is improved, ROP is improved, the cost is reduced. Similarly, if the cost is, if the cost is reduced, definitely you spend less time drilling a, a well. If you spend less time, definitely the, you know, the, the cutters are, the, the bit is aggressive. Right. This is how it uh, translates into. So bit is aggressive, it's capable of drilling faster. So that's how it is. And if the cutter is aggressive, then definitely, uh, you know, uh, it can drill a hard rock and so on. So it's, 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 it's just a schematic because there are lots of unknowns involved in this. But uh, with, the, with the amount of data you get uh, these days in real time, you can definitely 
manage, uh, you know, the, uh, the, to get the best of it. So to recap, now uh, I have uh, explained the drilling optimization, what it is and its purpose, uh, why it is useful. Um, the system approach, you know, energy in equals energy out. So you need, uh, you need to make sure that whatever energy you put in is used for destroying the rock and not for destroying the tools down hole. So you have, to, you have to take care of it. And uh, you have to understand uh, the geology, geomechanics, the, the well bore and the trajectory, what we are drilling. And based on that, you need to uh, design the drill string, your BHA and the bit. Similarly, yeah, it's, it's not just one set of parameters, but you have to look holistically. You have to look into mud engineering. You have to look into, uh, you know, the casing schematics, the past performance, the past experience, the crew, if you have got uh, enough experience on, on the, on the uh, rig and so on. So you have to think holistically when it comes to drilling efficiency or managing drilling efficiency in order to generate the value by effectively applying, you know, the solutions. So whatever, uh, you know, solutions you have, it needs to generate a value. Otherwise, um, you know, you're not uh, improving the process. So with that, I would like to thank you. And if there are any questions, please uh, let me know. Yeah, thank you so much sir, for this wonderful session, sir. Now we would move on to the much anticipated moment from the audience that is Q&A session. So our first question, sir, from Ankur Sarma. Sir, how do we mitigate the vibration during drilling operation? Okay, so it's, it's uh, very simple. So for understanding what's happening in real time, you need to measure that. And uh, in, in, in today's world, most of the rigs are uh, able to measure the surface data as well as you know, the, uh, the downhole data based on the BHA you deploy in, in, in that. So almost all the rigs, they have a surface sensor for measuring the hook load, weight on bit, or surface weight on bit, the torque on uh, the surface torque, uh, what uh, you're putting into uh, your string. So based on that, you can basically, uh, you know, get a bigger picture of what's uh, your input. And if you have uh, tools which can measure downhole uh, drilling dynamics, then it's an additional benefit. So you can see uh, whatever you are putting on surface is uh, resulted uh, downhole. You're not losing uh, any energy. Does, does that answer my question? Okay, sir. Our second question from Hardik Bakharia, sir. Sir, if we increase ROP too much, it could result in whole problems like stock pipe. So, where this concept comes into play? Right. So, as I said, uh, you cannot just look at one parameter. You have to look holistically. Maybe you uh, you you can drill a hole with uh, you know thousand feet an hour, but uh, looking at your your hydraulics, right? You need to you need to uh, you need to transfer the cuttings that are generated down there. Otherwise, you you will have this uh, cuttings accumulation in, in your hole, right? So in order to have the uh, better performance, uh, you need to have your mud capable of transporting the cuttings up to the surface. So ROP and cuttings generation or cuttings transportation from uh, down to the surface needs to look at. So ROP needs to be optimized for your hydraulics. Maybe, you know, the rig is not able to handle uh, the, the pump pressure, which is required for cleaning the hole, right? So you have to limit your ROP from that point of view. Then the second question is, or the, the second part of that question is the stuck pipe. Definitely, if you don't clean your hole properly, you have this cutting accumulation in, in the well board. And when you try to, in case, when you try to uh, pull out of hole, your BHA is, is bigger than your drill pipe. So drill pipe can easily move through this cuttings bed. But when it comes to the BHA or the collars, drill collars, then there is a restriction. And because of that restriction, uh, you, you, will, you will have uh, a stuck pipe incident. That's that's one. The stuck pipe incident can happen due to many reasons. For example, you know the the formation, the, the mud cake is thicker, 
right the murki ke sticker the 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 formation is uh, is uh, permeable so the the bha is wrapped in in, in this murki so that's differential sticking so there are different uh, stuck pipe events but uh, due to hole cleaning uh, you need to you need to manage your drilling and the drilling fluids properties and you need to make sure that your hole is clean before you pull out of hole okay sir our next question sir uh, sir please explain the big balling concept a little bit more all right bit bit balling as it says it's 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 uh, it looks like a ball you know it's a bit balling so in a sticky formations what happen is uh, the the bit is grab with this uh, mud so mud sorry uh, with the with the uh, with the formation so the cuttings they are not clean properly maybe uh, you need uh, some uh, bit anti bit balling uh, additives in your mud so that the bit is clean properly so maybe uh, the hsi uh, what is typically used for you know, defining how good um the bit is clean while drilling so uh, you need to make sure that the, the cuttings are removed and the bit is clean and sharp so if you have this uh, formation sticking to the bit definitely the aggressiveness of the bit is reduced so yeah that's that's uh, that's one of the uh, inefficiencies or reduced ROPs when you have this bit balling or even stabilizers can ball you know you have this uh formation which is sticking uh in between the space uh, of the stabilizers and that results into you know poor weight uh, transfer to the bit as you have this uh friction along the welbo and the twisting okay sir our next question sir uh someone asked sir, may i know the company is offering designation of drilling optimization um all the service companies they they look into uh, so what was the question so the tools offering uh, drilling optimizations or uh, what, what was the I question service, sir, i think service is asking uh, a designation of drilling optimization i think uh, job opportunities there are uh, job opportunities as a drilling optimization engineer if you look into the oil companies and the service companies so it's not uh, particular to uh, a service company it's also within the oil companies as i mentioned in one of my slides you know the exxon mobil they they look yes. into this uh, mechanical energy concept mechanical specific energy concept so uh, oil companies they do have uh, the team looking into you know uh, the holistic approach like i said yeah so there are plenty of opportunities okay sir and sir our next question sir is there any other tool apart from rss or rss for dd how to pack the key seats in multilateral wells how how to how to pack the key seats in multilateral wells how to pack the key seats okay um one thing <laughs> uh maybe this uh, will be an elaborative explanation so what is key seat so when you have uh, you know drilling uh, a high dog like well so definitely you are pushing your drill string against the well pool and the continuous rotation or if if the section below that uh, high dog leg is is uh, longer enough then you spend more time spinning your string against the well bore in that particular area and that's the reason uh, you have the key sit uh, happening in the high dogleg area that's one point the other thing is how you can pack it off there is actually no way you can pack it off you if you have a key sit then you have a issue uh, while pulling out a hole because that's that's the point where your bha will get stuck so better uh optimize your well path so that you don't have your key sits happening while drilling no high dog leg section so it comes with the uh, holistic approach again you have to look at the <clears throat> well bore profile and based on that well bore profile you do your talk and drag analysis a load analysis and you see uh, where are the side forces happening 
along the string. And as you see, if there are any high contact forces uh, while drilling a particular depth, then try to reduce the dog leg in that uh, in that uh, you know, well path. So this is the 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 way to avoid the key sits. Okay, so our next question from Suleiman SM. What are the disadvantages of using drilling mud in case of underbalanced conditions, sir? What are the advantages of uh, drilling sir, unbalanced? Sir. What are the disadvantages of using drilling mud in case of underbalanced condition? Sorry, I, I didn't get the uh, question properly. So what are the disadvantages of... Uh, drilling mud in case of underbalanced condition. Okay, okay, got it. <clears throat> so uh, actually underbalanced drilling is, uh, is, you know, it's not usually recommended because underbalanced meaning your hydrostatic pressure is less than your pore pressure, right? And in that case, the risk of having a kick in your well is high. So that's the first thing. Um, if you want to drill under balance, then definitely it has to be, you know, um, well reasoned. For example, the formation is not able to, uh, you know, uh, hold the hydrostatic pressure, or maybe you are damaging your reservoir, which has got uh, less permeability and porosity. So, in order to have less skin uh, develop on the well core, you uh, drill under balance. And for that, um, you have to design the drill fluid, drilling fluid, which is, you know, which is resulting in less hydrostatic compared to the pore pressure. That's how you drill that balance. Okay, sir. And our next question, sir. So drilling success rate in HPSTL, high pressure, high temperature wells. Mm -hmm. Drilling success rate. Uh, it's, it cannot be quantified in, in a number. But definitely, drilling HPHT wells is, is a challenge, right? Because uh, because of the high temperature, the reliability of uh, downhole electronics is compromised. So there are tools available uh, which can drill up to 160 degrees Celsius. But again, you know you have you have this uh, dysfunction down there, and the high temperature that uh, causes you know a failure rate uh, high. But still, yeah, uh, the, the technology is improving. The industry is trying hard to have, uh, you know, uh, longer uh, runs with the BHAs. The reliability is improving. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's going up. Okay, sir, our next question, sir. How to clean the hole in stuck pipe in horizontal well if there is low flows? If there is? Low flows, F-L-O-W-S flows. No flows. No, no, L O W, no flows, sir. How to clean the whole okay. pipe in horizontal well if there is low flows? Right, okay. So you, you, you design your string and you place your jar and you do your jar calculations, right? So in case of any stuck event, you, you fire your jar. Jar can be a hydraulic or mechanical jar, you know, and based on uh, your calculation, you, you place um, heavy weights or drill collars um, above and below the jar. So once you, you are stuck and not able to rotate or have any flow, then you try to, you know, you try to pull or you try to over pull your string. If not, then you fire, fire a jar. That's, that's the common practice. Uh, and yeah, you, you try jarring several times and then yeah, yeah, hopefully it, it uh, you know, your stuck pipe is resolved. Okay, so answer. I think uh, this will be our last question from Mohammed Gulam, sir. How do we calculate threshold vibration for safety? Threshold values for uh, okay for safety. There is, there are several safety factors. For example, if you if you look at the drill string, then the tensile tensile strength and the tall yield strength. You got you got safety factors for that. So normally, typically. 25 30 percent is what uh, you look for you know uh, if you look at the yield, yield strength then yeah 25 percent is what you look for that's the safety factor uh, for for the for the tubulars is, is that the, the answer yes sir uh, i think no more questions from or sir if you will get we will forward to your mail id sir 
I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have I have uh, a link uh, on the first page for LinkedIn. So yeah. if you want to get uh, connected, you can go to the LinkedIn and request or. Uh, there is an email address on the LinkedIn profile, so if you want to get uh, in contact, you can use that email address. Sure. Sure. So, thanks to all for your valuable time and cooperation to make the event successful. I be off from the Petroleum Engineers Association, thanking Dr. Padibal Patil sir for his presence and providing us time from his very busy schedule. Thanking him for his informative and valuable presentation. Hope all of you have enjoyed this knowledge sharing session. I'm thankful to all for your active participation. I extend my big thanks to all my team members for their extensive support. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for attending, and thanks for your time as well. Thanks. Hoping all. to see you soon again, sir. Hope to see you soon. Yes. And uh, uh, participants, uh, at uh, seven o'clock, uh, we will forward the feedback link so that you can. Full and submit by tomorrow morning seven o'clock. Thank you so much. So we are getting a lot of feedback. Thank you so much for this amazing session. Thank you so much. Good day. Bye. Have a good day, sir. Have a good day, ahead, sir.